everyone once again welcome to the dubai's world channel today i'm going to represent a very new topic and very important for a net exam that is the anatomy of kidney and their functions the major excretory organ of mammals is the kidney humans have two kidneys located in the upper rear region of the abdominal cavity the urine they produce is conducted to the urinary bladder through the ureters the urethra drains the bladder the internal structure of the kidney includes an outer cortex and an inner medulla. The ureter divides into branches, the ends of which envelop medullary tissues called renal pyramids. The actual work of the kidney is carried out by functional units called nephrons. Each human kidney contains about a million nephrons. Each nephron consists of vascular and tubule components. An afferent arterial carries blood to a knot of capillaries called the glomerulus. Draining each glomerulus is an afferent arterial that gives rise to the paratubular capillaries, most of which surround the cortical portions of the nephron tubules. Blood pressure forces water and small molecules to be filtered from the glomerulus and collected in Bowman's capsule. The initial segment of a renal tubule is called the proximal convoluted tubule. The glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, and proximal convoluted tubule of each nephron are located in the cortex. From the proximal convoluted tubule, the nephron tubule turns down into the medulla. The portion of the tubule in the medulla is called the loop of Henle. Where the ascending limb of the loop of Henle reaches the cortex, it becomes the distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubules of many nephrons join a common collecting duct in the cortex. The collecting ducts then run in parallel with the loops of Henle down through the medulla and empty into the ureter at the tips of the renal pyramids. A few paratubular capillaries run into the medulla in parallel with the loop of Henle and the collecting duct and form the vasa recta. These capillaries carry away the molecules that are reabsorbed from the tubules. All of the paratubular capillaries join back together into a venule that eventually leads to the renal vein. Nephrons regulate the composition of blood and urine by a combination of filtration, secretion, and reabsorption. Viewed schematically, we will see how these processes are facilitated by the regular arrangement of segments of the nephron. The proximal convoluted tubule is responsible for most of the reabsorption of water and solutes from the glomerular filtrate. The cells of this section of the nephron actively transport sodium ions and other solutes, such as glucose and amino acids, out of the tubule fluid. The active transport of solutes out of the proximal convoluted tubule into the tissue fluid causes water to flow by diffusion. The water and solutes moved into the tissue fluid are taken up by the paratubular capillaries and returned to the venous blood, leaving the kidney. Despite the large volume of water and solutes reabsorbed out of the proximal convoluted tubule, the overall concentration or osmolarity of the fluid that enters the loop of Henle is similar to that of the blood plasma, although its composition is quite different. The ability of the kidney to produce urine that is hypertonic to the blood plasma is due to the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle does not concentrate the urine directly. Rather, it functions as a countercurrent multiplier, creating a concentration gradient in the surrounding medulla. To understand the countercurrent multiplier mechanism, it's easiest to move backward through the tubule, starting with a thick ascending limb. The thick ascending limb actively transports sodium ions from the tubule fluid and moves it into the surrounding tissue fluid. Chloride ions follow passively. The thick ascending limb is not permeable to water, so the reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions out of this part of the tubule is not followed by the outward diffusion of water. This reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions raises the concentration of solutes in the surrounding tissue fluid. The descending limb, in contrast, is permeable to water, but not very permeable to sodium and chloride ions. Since the surrounding fluid has been made more concentrated, water leaves the tubule by osmosis. As a result, the fluid in the descending limb becomes more concentrated as it flows toward the bottom of the medulla. The thin ascending limb is not permeable to water. It is, however, permeable to sodium and chloride ions. 
Since the tubule fluid is more concentrated than the surrounding tissue, sodium and chloride ions diffuse out. The thick ascending limb continues to move sodium and chloride ions to the medulla by active transport. As a result of this process, the tubule fluid reaching the distal convoluted tubule is less concentrated than the blood plasma, and the solutes that have been left behind in the renal medulla have created a concentration gradient in the surrounding tissue fluid. Since the fluid entering the distal convoluted tubule is less concentrated than the surrounding cortex, the tubule loses water osmotically as it flows toward the collecting duct. The tubule fluid entering the collecting duct is at the same concentration as the blood plasma. However, since sodium and chloride ions have been moved out of the tubule fluid, urea and other waste products make up a greater proportion of its total solute content. As the collecting duct descends from the cortex to the tip of the renal pyramid, the concentration gradient established by the loop of Henle increases. This increasing solute concentration causes more and more water to be absorbed from the fluid, thus concentrating the urine in the collecting duct. Thank you for viewing my video. Please do share and subscribe my channel and keep commenting on that, that how you like and is it useful for you.